Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly channel. My name is John, and today I'm gonna to help you assemble your Adventure Tower Deluxe playset. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with your playset. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your playset will come in several boxes and pieces, but all of that will come in one big crate, so let's take a look at what you should have received. It's recommended that you have the help of two other adults for this build, but we were able to complete it with the help of just one, so be sure to have some help available. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at some of the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a half inch socket, a Phillips screwdriver, a half inch wrench, a ladder, a rubber mallet, 3 16 Allen key, which is included, a 3 8 drill bit, a 5 16 drill bit, a Phillips bit, a quarter inch wrench, a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware, and a tape measure. To make this easier, we're going to use a 3 16 hex bit and a socket adapter. When building this playset, make sure it's on a flat level surface, free from any obstructions, at least seven feet from buildings, trees, fences, or any other objects. Also, to reduce the risk of injury, it's important that you prepare a shock absorbing surface such as wood chips or rubber mulch to build your playset on. This video will focus on the assembly of this playset and not the shock absorbing surface, so it's crucial that you refer to your manual to review the safety instructions for this build. All right, let's get started. First, take the angled deck supports and attach them to the small deck support tube, making sure the hole in the deck support tube is closer to the top. Also, the dimpled holes on the angled deck supports need to be facing down. Repeat the previous step for the remaining angled deck supports and the small deck support tube. Just like you did with the small deck support tubes, make sure that the hole in the main deck support tube is closer to the top. Align the two assemblies with the main deck support and secure with the hardware. Now take the swing support tower pole, which is the one with the warning sticker, and attach the foot cap at the bottom of the pole. In preparation to attach the pole from the previous step to the deck support assembly, make sure it's oriented like this. Now we're going to attach the pole to this location here, making sure these two holes line up with these holes in the bracket. You know you have this positioned right when the warning sticker is facing out. Now attach the pole to the deck support assembly. The threaded bolt will go through the bottom hole and the shoulder bolt will go through the top hole.
Now attach the brackets on the side of the pole with the hardware. Now attach the braces to the pole, making sure it goes through this hole right here and only finger tighten the hardware for now. Starting with the brace on the bottom, bend it so that the hole on the other end lines up with the hole in the deck support assembly and secure with the hardware. Go ahead and tighten the hardware and the hardware from the previous step. Now we're going to add the foot caps to the three remaining poles. Make sure you add the foot caps to the end that doesn't have a small notch. Now attach the three remaining legs to the deck support using the same method as the first leg.
Now you're going to attach two handrails to the pole with the warning sticker. There are two holes underneath. You're going to attach the handrails to the hole that's closer to the top. Now attach the rest of the handrails to the poles until it makes a complete circle. Now insert the pole caps into the top of the poles, making sure the holes line up. Once that's done, go ahead and stand the assembly up on its feet. Now using the 3 8 drill bit, drill out all 11 divots on the deck panels, going from the top down. Slide your deck onto the deck support, making sure that this center hole lines up with the center hole on the main deck support rail. Make sure you engage the interlocking tabs on the deck panels by sliding them together. Attach the deck to the deck support with the bolts through the center holes while another person is underneath securing with the nuts. Now we're going to attach the rail supports to the deck. Your rail supports should be labeled. If they're not, you're looking for the ones that have the holes further apart and closer to the bottom. Start by inserting the bottom of the rail support into the cutout. Make sure the top of the rail support is on the outside of the handrail. Then secure the top with the hardware. Before you attach the bottom of the rail support to the deck, make sure you add your brackets so that they're oriented like this. Repeat the previous set for the rail support on the left side of the pole with the warning label.
Similar to the previous steps, add the remaining rail supports into the cutouts, except you're only going to add one bracket instead of two. Now we're going to secure the deck to the deck support through the remaining open holes. The screws are designed to go through the metal in the underlying poles. On the pole to the right of the pole with the warning sticker, attach a long brace to this hole on the pole, making sure the flat side of the brace goes against the pole. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Now swing the long brace up and attach it to the smaller bracket. Repeat the previous step for the other side of the tower. Now you can go ahead and secure all of the hardware. On the rail support to the right of the pole with the warning sticker, attach a rail handle labeled B to the right side. Repeat the previous step for the remaining rail handles labeled B, attaching them to the rail supports, alternating left and right sides as you work your way around the tower. On the pole opposite the pole with the warning sticker, place two plugs in the front and back of this hole here. On the pole to the right of the pole with the warning sticker, attach the rail handles marked A to both sides of the pole. Repeat the previous step on the pole opposite of this one. Take the metal railings and attach them to the pole with a warning sticker.
Before tightening the center bolts, make sure to attach it to the rail supports first. Now go ahead and tighten up all the hardware. Now attach the brackets to the pole opposite the pole with the warning sticker. When you attach the brackets, make sure the brackets at the top of the hardware goes through the top hole and the brackets at the bottom, the hardware goes through the bottom hole. For this next step, we're going to be drilling holes through this plastic barrier. Use the brackets as a guide that we installed earlier and align the holes with the divots on the plastic barrier so you can drill through them. Now repeat the same process for the other barrier. Now attach the plastic barriers to the brackets through the holes we just drilled out. Using the holes on the rail support as a guide, drill through the divots on the plastic barrier. Now secure the plastic barriers to the rail supports through the holes we just drilled out. Align the edges of two of the roof panels and secure them together. Repeat the previous process for the other two roof panels. Bring the roof supports in a raised X position and secure with the hardware, only finger tighten hardware for now.
lay the roof supports into the roof, making sure the holes on the roof support line up with the holes on the roof and secure with the hardware. It may be easier to flip the roof panel over so you can have better access to the center holes. Tighten the hardware in the middle, holding the roof supports together. Now place the roof dome onto the roof. There are arrows on the dome and arrows on the roof. Make sure that they line up. Now secure the dome to the roof through the divots with the hardware. With the help of another person, lift the roof up onto the tower, making sure the holes in the roof support line up with the holes on the poles. Now go ahead and secure the roof supports to the poles with the hardware. In the back of the climbing walls, drill out four holes in these locations. Attach your handholds to the rock wall, making sure the notches line up with the grooves in the rock wall. Attach the rock wall to the wall panel through the holes, but not in the top hole. Attach the two wall panels from the previous step to the bracket on the right side of the pole with the warning sticker.
Attach these two wall panels together through the holes with the hardware, but not in the top hole. Place this wall panel to the right of the previous wall panel and secure to the bracket through the top hole. For this step, it may be helpful to have another person inside the tower, but you're going to connect the wall panels to the pole with the hardware. Attach these two wall panels together through the holes with the hardware, but not in the top hole. Attach the wall panels from the previous step to the right of the wall panels we attached earlier through the top hole onto the bracket with the hardware. Attach the wall panels to the pole with the hardware. It may be helpful to have another person on the inside. Now attach the final wall panels together through the holes with the hardware, but not in the top hole. Before attaching the final wall panel, make sure it goes underneath the wall panel already in place on the pole with the warning label. Connect the wall panel from the previous step to the bracket through the top hole with the hardware. Finish connecting the rest of the wall panels to the poles with the hardware. It may be helpful to have another person on the inside. Secure the caps to the arch climber legs with the hardware. Attach all five rungs to one side of the climber legs. Leave these loose in preparation for the next step.
Attach the other climbing leg to the other side of the rungs. The slide and the ladder are interchangeable, but they must go over one of these openings. Once you've decided where you want the ladder to go, drill out two divots from underneath the deck. Once you've got your holes drilled, slide the flat end of the ladder underneath the deck, align the holes, and secure with the hardware. Behind the other large opening, drill out three of the divots in the deck to accommodate for the slide. Now drill out the three divots at the top of the slide. Align the holes at the top of the slide with the holes on the deck that you drilled out previously, and then secure with the hardware. Now attach the steering wheel to the pole with the warning sticker and then secure with the hardware. Now add the cap to the center of the steering wheel. Attach the pendulums to the trapeze swing bar with the hardware. Be sure not to over tighten the hardware, you want the pendulums to rotate freely. Secure the end cap to the trapeze swing bar and secure the end cap with the plugs. Secure the foot caps to the ladders with the plugs, making sure the holes in the foot caps line up with the holes in the ladder. Attach the gussets to the ladders with the hardware.
Place the saddle caps at the top of the ladder, making sure the saddle lines up with the gusset so that the monkey bar can rest in the saddle. Place the monkey bar in the saddle caps and attach to the gussets with the hardware. Now place the caps on each end of the monkey bar, making sure the holes in the caps line up with the holes in the monkey bar. On one end, fill these holes with the plugs. With the help of another person, lift the monkey bar assembly up onto its feet. The fire pole goes on the side of the monkey bars where you left the open holes, so make sure to position that side where you want the fire pole to be. Now you're going to attach the trapeze bar to the monkey bars, making sure the side with the pendulums goes on the opposite side of the tower. Attach the pendulums to the swing bar, and again, don't over tighten because you want the pendulums to swing freely. With the help of another person, insert the swing bar into the trapeze bar and secure with the hardware. With the help of another person, position the swing bar onto the pole with a warning sticker. While one person is supporting the swing bar, attach it to the pole with the warning label and secure with the hardware. Now you can attach the swings and the trapeze bar to the pendulums. Now take your tape measure and measure 21 inches diagonally from each leg on the side of the monkey bars where you left the holes at the top and where they intersect is where you'll drive your anchoring rod. Since we're inside we won't be able to complete this step but you will need to take your anchoring rod and drive it into the ground until only half remains above the surface. 
Once your anchor rod is in the ground, slide your fire pole over the top until it's on the ground. Now take your fire pole hoop and slide it inside the fire pole and attach it to the monkey bars with the hardware. Now secure the fire pole hoop to the fire pole with the hardware. Now we're going to anchor down the playset. Start by removing this nut from this leg. Then place the cable, the washer, and then reattach the nut. Once that's attached, using the anchoring rod, drive the anchor down into the ground, placing it about 6 to 8 inches away from the leg and going down in the ground at least 12 inches. If there's any slack in the line once you've anchored it down, go ahead and loosen the nuts on the cable and pull out the slack and then tighten the nuts back down. Once you've finished these steps, repeat the same steps for the pull on the opposite side of the tower. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your Lifetime Adventure Tower Deluxe playset. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at Lifetime.com.